So this is my daily uh, watching the world burn report. <laughs> ah, man, what a day! Ah, physical therapy. Good day. Though. I'm glad that uh, glad that I'm doing that. Um, by the way, I, I was going to try to summarize all of this because I don't like to take from other uh, creators. Uh, this is Alexander Mayorkas. I hope that uh, I'm driving people to his channel on YouTube. Uh, brilliant guy. Holy moly. And uh, but I, and I don't even know how he how he has time to find. I mean, I have. I, how does he have time to find all of this information? But this was the most interesting thing that I've I, as I fish around the channels today uh, in my limited time because I just got home from physical therapy not too long ago. And I, but this this is the uh, Ministry of Defense report from Russia. Like I said, we don't get anything from the Western media. It's unfortunate. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to just keep giving you the Russian slant on everything, but they're the only ones that report anything. <laughs> you know, so so uh, anyway, th this is I, I was going to summarize it in my notes, and I and I still will because this is an hour long video, and I, how many of you that are working for a living have time to watch an hour long video? But. Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to summarize it, but I did want you to hear this part of his video real quick. I'm just taking maybe about maybe a five minute clip here. Ready? In the evening of 12th January, the city of Solidar, that is of great importance for continuing successful offensive operation in Donetsk direction, was liberated. The establishment of full control of Solidar allows to block the supply routes of Ukrainian forces in the city of Artyomovsk. To repeat again, that is the Russian name for Bakhmut, located to the southwest, as well as to block and to pocket the units of the armed forces of Ukraine that still remain there. Now, one of the things he'll go on in the video to talk about is uh, the fact that there's been three, well, according to reports, I mean, even he says, you know, all the information is sketchy that we get here in the West because our media is is corrupt but uh, what what he said is there's been three counteroffensives reported um, and the Ukrainians have taken heavy losses uh, and I wrote down well 700 they said in the first attack they lost 700 soldiers uh, unconfirmed of course uh, you know this is what the Russians are reporting so who knows so three counteroffensives and, uh, and then he goes on and later in the video also he says that they're talking about a fourth counteroffensive so that's why in the Western media, you're really not getting much information because I guess the Ukrainians are of this illusion that they're going to take back Solodar and, and wash this whole thing under the rug. But let's just listen to the Russian ministry uh, report as he continues. And as it triggers thoughts in my head, I'll, I'll add to the video as we go along. In other words, the Russians are seeking to trap Ukrainian troops in Bakhmut. We'll come to that shortly. The capture of Solidar Okay, so the other thing that, that he pointed out was uh, there was a CNN um, call from uh, Solidar. It was a Ukrainian soldier. Uh, they had been basically abandoned and left behind. And uh, much like we did in Afghanistan when Biden pulled out and left Americans behind uh, enemy lines, that's what the Democrats do. But uh, so anyway, um, I, I don't see any hope for the remaining. Now, now, supposedly, there might be little pockets of resistance left in Solidar. Uh, the Russians are claiming total victory. Um, I don't know. Uh, and, and, and I don't see how a counteroffensive at this point is going to be successful. Uh, you, you would want to watch Colonel Doug McGregor. Uh, he's a much more brilliant strategist than, than I am. But we're going to get back to a little bit of history about all of this uh, as we continue along. Let's just keep listening to the Russian ministry report from Alexander Mayokers. Possible due to constant fire attacks launched at the enemy by ground attack and army aviation, missile troops and artillery of the Russian group of forces. Concentrated attacks now that was a, that was a funny part of uh, everything that I learned today. The Russian group of forces. <laughs> well, if you watch my videos in the previous video, I talked about the Wagner Group, and uh, that's the Russian group of forces. Now, there's it's it's interesting to watch geopolitics because what Alexander points out later on in the video was that you know 
the Russian ministry never acknowledged the, the Wagner group by name because the Wagner group commander, which we I did a video on all of this. You can go back and look at it. If you want to know what the Wagner group is, it's just a, a bunch of mercenaries that the Russia employs and they've been using them for since 2014. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, uh, let's just continue. I, as, it, as, this, as, I, as I listen to this, it just triggers things in my head about what's, what's, what's going on. But, there's a, but anyway, the, what I'm saying is it's a political divide. They, did, they didn't want to give the Wagner group credit because there, obviously there were a lot of other regular Russian forces that were involved in this conquest of Solodar. Uh, and I say conquest, they say liberation. You, know, you look at it however you want. Uh, uh, or defeat, or whatever, you know, whatever word you want to use. Uh, God knows, and today, I guess he, she, it, they, uh, her, I don't know, man. I, you know, it's a, it's a mixed up world, isn't it? That, that's why I call it watching the world burn. Well, uninterruptedly launched uh, Ukrainian military positions in the city, impeding the redeployment of reserve forces, ordnance supplies, as well as the enemy's attempts to redeploy to other defensive lines. Dad, got it. Hi. You got a chance. She'll call you back. YouTube uh, commercials. Lines. Within the liberation of the city, fighter aviation of the Russian aerospace forces has destroyed three airplanes and one helicopter of the Ukrainian Air Force that were tasked to provide aerial support. Fire support. See, you know, the thing about Russian reporting is how specific they are. Three aircraft and one helicopter. Now, if you wanted to uh, really, you know, uh, promote how your the battle went or what what goes on, um, you wouldn't give this many details uh, in this report. And so they're very specific about what they've destroyed and taken the city of Solodar. And I. Uh, you know, I, I it, it, you know, as much as I report on this, it makes me want to cry about the loss of life that's taken place because NATO wanted to pick a fight with a, a nuclear power called Russia. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of history here in a little bit after we listen to the ministry, the Russian ministry report. So let's keep going. The Ukrainian forces. Moreover, air defense crews of the Russian group of forces have shot down nine rocket propelled projectiles launched by HIMARS and Uragan multiple launch rocket systems at the strong points taken by the Russian forces near Solidar. Airborne troops carried out a covert maneuver from other. Uh, this gets very interesting in the video. I, I did not know that. Uh, well, I, we knew that the Russian paratroopers were in the area, and we didn't know how they were going to be deployed. And so, you know, I talked about this, because uh, those are the elite, uh, well, it's kind of like the, um, air, well, it used to be the United States Airborne uh, Division. I, I, I don't put much uh, uh, credence in their abilities anymore after our woke military. But, but no, these are the elite troops, and, and so we were always wondering, where are the Russian paratroopers? Where, where are the, those forces? Guess what? Now we have an answer. And then the Russian ministry says what they did was they parachuted them in, which is what their purpose is behind enemy lines. And listen to the rest. And let's listen to the ministry report. And you'll, you'll begin to understand how the battle took place and how Russia, I tell you what, they got some brilliant, brilliant uh, military commanders uh, just, just watching the whole whole thing take place and, and just listening to, to what uh, how they uh, took Solidar and minimized their casualties. I wish we had that type of leadership here in the United States. Other direction, attacking Ukrainian positions on the move, took the dominating heights and blocked the northern and southern limits of the... So you see what the paratroopers did. They parachuted in, they blocked uh, any sort of reinforcements that could come, and they took the high ground. That's what you always do in a battle. I, you know, if you ever want to watch Vietnam, you could watch Hamburger Hill. Is, is and, and that was just absurd. Uh, and we're going to get into the absurdity of all of this in in just a few. All right, hold on. Here, here we go. City, Russian electronic warfare facilities and forces concentrated in the above mentioned direction. Now, I want you to understand the 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 amount of equipment that's being employed in this battle. This is electronic warfare equipment, uh, artillery. I mean, you know. 
this this was a huge battle that took place and of course the western media is not going to report on it uh, but the fact that that russia has all of this hardware in this area just to, to, to basically wipe the ukrainians off the face of the earth which is what i you know i don't know i mean that's that's the way that I interpret it from the Russian perspective, but uh, let's just just continue. But because you know, but, but the paratroopers, we were wondering where they were. Well, they parachuted in behind enemy lines and they took the high ground and they cut off uh, any sort of reinforcements. And that's why those counterattacks probably failed. Neutralize hostile control systems and frustrated the operation of Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles. The set of measures adopted by the Russian group of forces has led to successful offensive operations of assault detachments in liberating Soledad within the last three days. Don't you love that word, liberating? <laughs> they destroyed the city. I mean, have you seen pictures of aerial photographs? There's nothing left, man. I mean, they bombed the shit out of it. Oh, my God. I... I'm looking at it going like, okay, well, you liberated it, but you liberated nothing but a dust bowl that's left uh, there. Uh, no, no buildings are, have, have not been bombed. Uh, God knows what happened to all the Ukrainian soldiers that were in there. 700 Ukrainian personnel and over 300 units of armament of the Ukrainian. Okay, these are the numbers of losses. So 700 Ukrainian soldiers, they're reporting 300 uh, well, let's just continue. But these are the numbers that the Russians are reporting that they wiped out. Uh, devastating losses for Ukraine. Um, and why they wanted to, why they wouldn't retreat, fall back to, a, a, like McGregor says, and, and, and fortify a, 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 a more effective fighting position. I guess political, right? Political. We got we to gotta have uh, Zelensky come in and hand a flag to Nancy Pelosi so that the United States will send another $110 billion to Ukraine, I guess. That's, a, that's what it's all about, right? It's not human life, equipment. That shit don't matter. No, no, we, we, we just got to, you know, keep, the, keep, keep feeding the, the meat grinder. Military have been eliminated. Now, you will notice one thing from this rather interesting discussion of the course of the battle which has been provided by the russian ministry of defense which is that there is no mention of the wagner organization that's what i was talking uh, about assault yeah. troops yeah. actually carried out the assault that captured solidar they are at one point referred to as the assault detachments with all right i can't i can't take too much content from i just wanted you to hear the russian report because uh, it was it was interesting to 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 learn about how uh the battle developed and and the strategy that was used uh so let me get into my notes uh so what one thing we're seeing here is you know history repeating itself uh because i i did a video a while back it was probably about a month or two ago and i talked about the battle of stalingrad which i wrote about in my book and uh and how this is this is very similar um uh, zelensky and uh whatever that uh, ukrainian general is it seems like they don't want to give up on uh, bakhmut or uh Soledad, and they just keep dumping um soldiers in there and the russians it's 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 almost the battle of stalingrad all over again when the russians uh, hitler just just wanted to take stalingrad he didn't understand that his forces were mobile forces and then you, you just don't sit there and slug it out with the Russians, you know, over and over and over again. And eventually, like I said in, in the previous video, you know, 93,000 uh, Germans surrendered. And of course, back then, only 5,000 of them survived. I mean, because they put them in uh, concentration camps and everything. So anyway, let's just get into my notes. Uh, we talked about the Russian paratroops. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, the three counterattacks, uh, and they reported... Uh, heavy losses now you know one thing that you know it's not reported on by the western media is how the sanctions uh, that they continuing to try to <laughs> levy on russia have completely failed oh my god so so today i was finding out i was like no way this can't be true is uh the russians are uh well what they're doing they did use they used to use airbus and boeing aircraft okay so what they're doing is they're ramping up their civilian uh industry because they're going to replace all these airbus and boeing aircraft with their own 
See, that's that's the thing. That's the thing the West doesn't understand. That's the thing the globalist, uh, the the neocons that they don't understand is Russia. They're they they're an independent nation. They've got all of the industry to replace everything Western. They they, they don't need our our Boeing aircraft or the Airbus aircraft. They, they've got their own civilian uh, uh, ability to build. They've got their own Navy. They've got their own shipbuilding industry, you know, just like we have a shipbuilding industry. So, they, so they're not dependent. Uh, so they're, and that, that's another thing. They're upgrading their maritime fleet to replace all of the um, uh, maritime um, activity that the West used to provide to them uh, when we were uh, trading with Russia and on friendly terms. So now they're just going to replace all of that and they're going to trade with India and Russia and 85% of the world. So they don't need, they don't need Western uh, 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 ships anymore. This is where the West is cutting themselves off. Um, so uh, what was the, uh, let's, let's get into, uh, well, 200 cow back moot. Oh, Bakhmut. Yeah, this, this is another thing. Russia claims that they surrounded, they have surrounded Bakhmut, but uh, there are reports that are, that there's some villages that are holding out that are still in Ukraine um, a, a possession. Now, what I don't understand is, uh, is why uh, Ukraine won't pull back from Bakhmut, because if Russia does surround them, which it looks like they're doing rapidly, with probably within the next week, all those soldiers are cut off from supplies, uh, uh, re, you know, anything, any uh, ammunition, food, uh, and then the Russians are just going to continue the meat grinder, and uh, and they're, they're all that's going to be a total loss for Ukraine. I wonder how the Western media is going to spin that one. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh my God, they'll probably just say, well, you know, they they got most of everything out. Um, well, and of course, then now you got uh, with the sanctions. Now we got Lithuania says they're going to seize uh, a bunch of Russian assets, and I guess give supposedly give them to Ukraine. I'm sure they'll probably end up in Democrat pockets. Uh, that'd be my guess of where that money's going to go, or even the in, uh, military-industrial complex. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, this was this was very interesting. Later on in the video, uh, Alexander goes into uh, Maturov. Maturov. There was a heated exchange between him and Putin. Now, you know, we've got Buttigieg, <laughs> oh, what a fucking idiot, in charge of our transportation, but this Maturov, he's in charge of uh, kind of the transportation industry for, for Russia. Now, if you've got a true leader, uh, Putin, you know, basically called him out on the floor, and this is, this is, this is the Russian equivalent of Buttigieg, uh, and I mean, Putin just filleted this guy, and this is what a leader does. He says, where are the numbers? He says, I'm getting reports from our civilian industry that you have not given them contracts. He says, we need the civilian aircraft, we need the ships, the maritime ships, he says, what is going on? And uh, it was a very public, uh, uh, you, you'd had, uh, Alexander, you know, reads the whole damn exchange. And I mean, just Putin just dressed this guy down. What a leader. God knows I wish that uh, we had didn't have Biden no more. But uh, so then uh, the next thing was um, the Economic Ninja. You know, I always encourage you to watch his videos. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to get through them, but he did point out that uh, what we're seeing now is central banks around the world, around the world, are cutting back. Uh, they're, they're laying people off by the thousands everywhere. Credit Susie, Wells Fargo, uh, uh, Bank of America. I mean, you name it, man. I mean, there, there's not a single central bank that's not laying off people. Um, so that's that's very interesting. Now, what do you think that means? What do you think that holds for the future? Watching the world burn, baby. Watching the world burn. Uh, the other thing that I uh, that I found very interesting on the liberal hive mind is uh, it sounds like uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to release the fourteen thousand hours of January six tapes that nobody has ever seen. Now, why would the Democrats not want you to see the fourteen thousand hours of tapes? Well, I'll explain it to you. And I, I, like I said, way back when this, this whole thing started, I was on Parler and I was telling everybody, I said, this is a psyop. It's a setup. Okay, there's no way that you get into the Capitol building unless you're invited in. You know, this, this whole thing was staged. And that's what I was reporting back then. But, uh, you know, and I have no proof of that. But it looks like if we get these 14,000 hours of tapes, at least I think we're going to see Capitol Police opening the doors and letting people into the building. Those doors are magnetically sealed, man. You don't get, 
<laughs> okay. And of course, we know that Nancy Pelosi wouldn't allow the National Guard to be deployed, and she had her own little uh, team there to, to film a documentary on that day. I mean, imagine that, heck, you know. So I, it, it's looking more and more. I'm not going to say for sure. We're going to find out, and especially, I bet people are going to just go through these 14,000 hours and uh, cherry pick, uh, you know, the information. We so we should see a whole different side of this thing now that Nancy Pelosi is not Speaker of the House. So this could be devastating for the Democrats. I mean, I I think that uh, the whole thing was a setup. That's just my opinion. I have no proof of that uh, uh, other than my, uh, uh, I guess, intelligence background. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, the um, the Sukuk Lukov. Salukov, uh, there's, uh, well, as we know, there's been a change up in the uh, Russian command structure. And uh, in Belarus, uh, well, I, I told you that most of the Russian forces haven't even engaged in battle. They're all being held in reserve. Well, they, what they're doing is they're beefing them up. They're bringing in ammunition. They're bringing in tanks. Uh, you know, it's, it's a massive buildup on a huge scale. So the, the forces that just took Solodar are minuscule in comparison to what's coming. So uh, this uh, Sekulov, he visited Belarus, and Belarus, uh, now they're getting belligerent. They're telling Ukraine if uh, Ukraine threatens them in any way, they're going to enter the war. So that'd be very interesting. Uh, but I, from what I'm seeing, though, um, I, the fact that this Sekulov visited there to, to basically just assess the, uh, uh, the situation, he just wanted to see, okay, are we ready? Are we ready for the offensive is the way that I interpret this visit. Because when you have a, a what, third in line deputy commander, you know, visit the, the front lines, uh, well, more or less the front lines, Belarus, if you want to call it that, or the, the, the staging ground for, for some of your forces, uh, who knows? Um, and that's, a, that's another thing was uh, Russia has opened up uh, multiple fronts in the attack, uh, and you'd have to watch uh, other videos. I didn't write down the names of, of where, but they, they're making progress in other areas. It's not just Belarus. Everybody's focused on Belarus at the moment, but there are multiple fronts now that they're attacking from. And remember, this is just a small amount of Russian forces. When the main force comes across, it's going to be huge. So let's get into just a little bit of investment. I always try to give you something. You're like, well, what, this, what am I supposed to do about all of this? Well, you know, I've been trying to give you advice and uh, I've been trying to help you. I got a couple of ticker symbols here, you know, CLGCF, CLGCF, I'm not going to tell you. I've just bought some more shares of MAG, MAG, uh, Rick Rule liked that uh, position. Uh, you know, it's not, this is an investment advice, you do what you want. I Like I told you, I like copper. I bought those copper coins from uh, SD Bullion. I think they're still on sale for $1.39 uh, just because of barterability. Um, and so the, the stock that I was recommending to get a position in copper was JUBAF, JUBAF, uh, made some money on that. Uh, and then of course uh, uranium I think is a good ploy. Uh, you got UEC here in the United States and you got UROI. UROI is a, um, another position. Um, so how much, how am I doing so far? Because I like to, to be honest about, you know, I, I only had, you know, maybe 30,000 to deploy into all of these uh, mining stocks. But so far, I mean, I'm doing pretty good. I've made $3,314 as of today. Uh, not bad. Uh, when you consider that, you know, in your portfolio, you might have lost about 30%. So I did want to give the numbers. I, I This was, this blew my mind. Holy moly. Okay, so silver, I mean, I was buying it 19, 20, 20. I, I even bought some at 2350, but today it hit 2446. Am I buying more? No, I can't. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm backing off, man. Uh, platinum, holy moly, 1079 today. Uh, that, that, I mean, God, I was buying platinum back in the day at $441 or so, you know. And then this, this one is the kicker. This is what tells you, and Russia, by the way, I saw a report that Russia just bought a huge amount of gold. Um, so we know China's buying gold, Russia's buying gold, India's buying gold. What do you think the whole world is stocking up on gold for? Well, I think it's to divest themselves of the dollar. Watching the world burn, baby, watching the world burn. But look at this number. I mean, gold was just, what, a month, two, month or two ago? It was at 1700 and something. And today it's at nine. 
$1,927 an ounce. Holy moly. I was like, no way. That, that, I, I, I'm actually shocked. I, you know, because I have just, have, you know, you only have so much time. I can't look at all these numbers and everything. So that's it for my watching the world burn video. So we got the central banks laying off people. We got Russia advancing on all fronts uh, with most of their forces held in reserve, still beefing them up with uh, ammunition and everything. We've got, oh, that was, uh, that was the other thing I was going to talk about was the uh, Ukrainian leadership. I mean, it just looks like they're in disarray and, and, and just idiots because they're still saying they want a, a fourth uh, counterattack towards Saladin. They need to withdraw those forces, and if they don't, they're going to get wiped out. Um, and I keep giving you the numbers that the Russians are reporting. Believe them with a grain of salt. I mean, I don't know if I could get numbers out of the West or out of Ukraine. Uh, but you you understand Ukraine? Uh, to me, they're kind of a Nazi nation. They've they've got a total clampdown on their media. They can't report anything honest, uh, and. And they've treated their citizens very poorly, from what I can tell, uh, on all the reports. So I don't understand why we're spending, oh, other than the money laundering machine that, <laughs> that is all things Ukraine. I, boy, I tell you, the oligarchs, they're going to hurt from this. I mean, because how are they going to launder money? I mean, they're going to they're gonna have to go into another place than to be able to launder money through Ukraine. Uh, you, I, but hey, that, isn't that interesting that we haven't heard anything about the FTX money laundering scheme that the Democrats had where they gave... Uh, what was it, 40, I can't remember, 40, 70 million dollars where they laundered it right through Ukraine and, and funded all those, I was wondering where all that money was coming from. The Democrats in the last election outspent the Republicans sometimes 10 to 1, 5 to 1, 7 to 1. Where did all that money come from? You know, why does Obama live in a mansion? Why does uh, Joe Biden have six houses or whatever, you know? I mean, it, it's funny how the Democrats uh, just don't pay attention to any of this stuff. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, peace out, stay free, and it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida.